I'm very curious as to why, given her deep concern about the cost of diesel, for example, that she voted against our move to freeze uh, petrol and diesel prices this year. Louise Hague. No, the Transport Secretary thinks he's onto a very clever point here, but I would remind him that the last time, given that we've previously voted against Tory budgets, but the last time the Tories tried to put up fuel duty, my honourable friend, the now Shadow Chancellor, actually forced a vote in Parliament to delay the increase. But people need help in the here and now as they struggle to make decisions over which basic essentials to cut. But this has to be a wake-up call for the government. This crisis shows exactly why this country must never again be left dependent on the oil and gas of foreign despots. My Honourable Friend for um, Sefton earlier mentioned the stats of 1,000 electric vehicle charging units outside London, a stat which he failed to correct, which reveals the gross inequity of access in this country to EV charging units. The Infrastructure Commission was also damning in its appraisal that the government has no plan to deliver infrastructure. So when will he publish the strategy on EV infrastructure that the industry is calling for to help turbocharge the transition to clean transport? Well, Mr Speaker, I do have to say again, it's what words are one thing, and I understand the, the Honourable Lady is doing her job, but action is another thing. And when, and when individuals vote against measures that will freeze fuel prices for British consumers and motorists, they can hardly then stand there and say, why isn't the government doing something? They could help. They could vote for it. In terms of EV charging, I don't know where the stat of 1,000 charges outside London uh, comes from. It's completely untrue. There are nearly 30,000 chargers across the country, uh, of which over 5,500 are rapid. And Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, according to the Society of Motor Manufacturers, we now have the fastest chargers in the West, and I hope the Honourable Lady will welcome that.